Five, twelve, one. November 23rd. That was the Edmonton Oilers record after 18 games. Five, twelve, one. Not a winning season by November 30th of 2023. Now they are in the Stanley Cup Finals. An amazing turnaround. Do not lose heart. <laughs> A writer puts it this way. Don't give up when you can't see results right away. Some things take time. Just be patient with yourself. Being a follower of Jesus requires the three P's. Patience, persistence, and perseverance. Besides weariness, other factors like suffering, sickness, temptation, failure, loneliness, and harassment can make those of us who walk with Jesus more vulnerable to discouragement and even abandoning our faith altogether. Have you ever found that? Then there's the opposite. When everything is going perfectly, when all your ducks are in a row, you may be tempted to grow complacent, bored, or just slack off on your walk of faith. For this reason and many more, we hear those words, do not lose heart. It is given frequently in the New Testament. There's six of them, powerful ones, in the Christian scriptures, the New Testament, in Luke, in Corinthians, in Galatians, Ephesians, Hebrews, and Thessalonians. Do not lose heart. Paul included that expression in many, many of his pep talks. That's really what Paul's letters were all about. When Paul could not be there physically in the churches he had founded around Asia Minor, he sent letters to be read in their services, in their gatherings, to give them encouragement, support, and direction. Paul told the Thessalonians in what is present-day Greece, as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Never tire. Twice he urged the Corinthians, also in Greece, to persist in the ministry of the gospel, to, in spite of the setbacks, saying, therefore, we do not lose heart. He told his prodigy, Timothy, do not lose heart in pursuing righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Timothy was told by Paul, to fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you. Regularly I speak to people who are losing heart. It seems their heart is no longer in life. It might be a result of loss, disappointment, conflict, or addiction. This can also happen when many people at middle age go through a major adjustment in their lives. Losing heart literally means giving in to that which is not God's way. 
That's what Paul is talking about today. We lose heart when we cave in, inside and outside, refusing to live a life based on the promises of God. We stop looking to Jesus. We stop depending on the Holy Spirit to guide us. Maybe we even get to the point, I can do it all myself. We say, we don't need God's way. We might even set ourselves up as God. By the way, we're not. Let's make that perfectly clear. We are made in God's image, but we are not divine. Henry Nouwen, the Dutch Catholic priest, professor, writer, and theologian, shared the lesson of trust he learned from the family of trapeze artists. After watching them fly through the air with the greatest of ease, he asked one of the flyers the secret of the handoff in midair. Have you ever seen it? It is amazing. They explained to Nouwen, the secret is that the flyer does nothing. The catcher does everything. When I fly to Joe, my catcher, I simply stretch out my arms and wait for him to catch me and pull me safely over the apron. The worst thing a flyer can do is to try to catch the catcher. If I grab Joe's wrists, I might break them, or he may break mine, and that would be the end of both of us. A flyer must fly, a catcher much, must catch, and the flyer must have trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. Now you know which one you and I are. We try to do both sometimes, don't we? But we're the flyer. We just trust in God. Don't lose heart. Another area of losing heart involves unanswered prayers. People will say, I prayed and prayed and there was no response. There was no answer. First of all, think of it. No answer is an answer in itself. For example, I text a friend to say, hey, Joe, you want to join us to watch the hockey game? Joe never responds to my text. There was an answer. The answer was no. But then, during the second intermission of the playoffs, Joe texts me and says, done work early, heading over to see the third period. In both cases, there are answers. The difference is timing and circumstance. When we pray, it is not an automatic response. It does not bounce back to us immediately. Well, sometimes it does, but that's more the exception. God has answers that we have not even thought of yet. And sometimes we just need to wait. In Luke 18... We read, always pray and do not lose heart. Always pray, do not lose heart. What is the danger here? We think we're not getting what we want, so we stop, we give up, we walk away. Jesus says, always keep 
praying. He tells the story of a widow who kept knocking at the door of a judge. She kept at it and at it and at it. Even the judge who was corrupt in time gave in. Jesus says, if your heavenly father who loves you more will hear and will respond, but just don't lose heart. Keep praying. There's a writer, Colin Smith, and he authored a book entitled How I Get Heaven Here and Now. And he writes, the world is scared by the increasing conflicts around us. We watch the news and we wonder, what in the world is going to happen next? It's easy in that situation to lose heart. Have you ever PVR'd the nightly news? And you fast forward through the stories you don't want to look at? The stories may be anything from Ukraine to Gaza, the U.S. election campaign to increasing tension in the Taiwan Strait, gun violence here in the GTA to wildfire fires out west. The list can go on. But we are tempted to lose heart. Colin Smith continues, then there's that huge moral shift that's taken place in our culture. As we've moved away from God being the basis and God's word being the basis for us, to basically what is it that we want. And it's easy in that situation to lose heart. It's easy to lose heart. We can just want to run away from it, don't we? We just want a cocoon. We want to be away from the events of the world. We want a kinder, gentler time. We long for the past. Smith continues and says, there are personal burdens that many of us carry, often unknown to others, invisible. Some are long Struggles over illness, treatment that doesn't seem to be working, treatment after treatment. There's issues with loved ones, there's family strife. And it's hard to find peace. So some might say, my life is not what I want it to be. I just I'll give up. I'll lose heart completely. But that's not what Jesus says. That's not what Paul says today. Don't lose heart. Keep on keeping on. One foot after another. However you want to express it. As Christians, we view the world in a different way. First of all, we believe there is a creator and that creator is alive in our lives and it's not simply a roll of the dice. We believe that life is not simply random acts. There's purpose and guidance and direction. We also believe that our life is not simply here and now, but as was said clearly in the scripture, that there is an eternity beyond. And that changes our perspective about how we look at each day. First of all, we look for the purpose and the meaning and the plan. But we also understand that this is only for a time. That there is an eternity beyond. We can't be the trapeze artist who both flies through the air and catches ourselves. We need to be caught by God.
And for that, we do not lose heart. Thanks be to God.